Hi, welcome back. So we've now pretty much exhausted principles. I've given you quite a few exercises over the last five or six videos and there's not much more I want to give you. All right, what I want to do now is I want you to focus on how efficient your current leadership style is. <sighs> oh, I just said leadership style. Now, you might not define yourself as a leader. You might do. You might be thinking potentially you could lead someone in some way at some point in the future. But let me just propose this, that you are a leader. You always have been a leader because you've always led yourself. Now, what I'm not saying is that you've always been an efficient nor an effective leader, all right? You will be able to gauge the efficiency and the effectiveness of your leadership. And if you take a productivity course, then you've most likely identified a few flaws. All right, so I wanna open up this teaching here. I'm gonna come on to an interesting <laughs> idea to help you identify your leadership, your leadership approach. Um, because how effectively you lead yourself will determine ultimately how productive you go on to be and how efficient and effective you are. Um, so I want to ask you a question. Is it really productivity that you want or is it progress? Now, I know we touched on this earlier on, um, but if you think about it, um, some people kind of get focused on productivity, which is very much centered around outcomes and outputs and deliverables and all that kind of thing. Um, but I've spoken with and I've trained many people in this area over the years. And when we start to kind of get down to the nitty gritty, a lot of people think they want productivity, but what they actually just want is progress. Progress, which is different from productivity. Come on, if you think about it, people want to feel like they're moving forward in life. But what is moving forward? Again, moving forward in life is something that many people claim they want, but it's another one of these abstract concepts like time or space. Think about it, at any given moment in time, all right? Um, we live in two different realities, don't we? Shall I explain? Okay, so we have our current state, i.e. our current state of affairs, the current condition of our life. And then we have this ideal state, this ideal state of affairs, I i.e. the greener grass on the other side of the fence, you know, where life is just as we always hoped it would be. Um, and then there's a gap, there's a, there's a void, there's a caveat in between the two. So a lot of people uh, focus on where they're at. Some people feel okay about where they're at, some people feel not so okay about where they're at. And sometimes some people, devote themselves to being more productive because they think that being more productive is just going to make them feel better about where they're currently at. All right, but I want to provoke you to consider if productivity is not enabling you to progress in life, then what is the point? All right, life's just one big transition. I think we've already mentioned that. So you've got your current reality and if you learn principles that enable you to start being hyper-focused and more self-controlled and disciplined and regulated, thus more productive, then naturally over time, you're gonna progress. Progress is what bridges the gap between where you're at and where you wanna be. Now, most folk are gonna understand this. There's a pretty good chance you're gonna be saying, yeah, it seems pretty reasonable, pretty reasonable thing to say. Progress is what bridges the gap between where you're at and where you want to be. In your relationships, in your finances, in your leadership, in your management, in your business endeavors, in your work pursuits. So, um, five aspects of productivity, all right? Um, Awareness, first and foremost. We've got to be aware of how it is that we govern our lives and direct our outcomes. And this is kind of everything we've covered throughout this stage of the course, all right? You've got to be clear on what your priorities are in order to prioritize your priorities before all other non-prioritized activity. If you don't do that, you're going to end up being time inefficient and unproductive, 
all right? Not in the areas that are actually going to count for you. Self-awareness comes first. We talked about this right back at the start of the course. Decisiveness. Life is a constant process of deciding what we're going to do next. Procrastination is the arch enemy of productivity and progress. In order to progress or be more productive, you've got to be decisive. You've got to commit to the process of making tough decisions. And this is kind of what the stretch zone encompasses a whole load of decision making. Consistency. Consistency is habitual. We've covered this as well. And this is kind of all I'm really doing here. I'm bringing you up to speed with where we are currently are in our understanding. Right, consistency is a quality of behavior which doesn't vary greatly over time. Now, some people are consistently inconsistent. Some people are consistently unproductive. Some people are consistently unprogressive. And this might be one of the factors why you've enrolled in this course. Now, I've just got in your face and challenged you in a few areas. I've offered you a few very, very practical ways that you can develop new and build new disciplines into your life, new habits. You're only ever one, one habitual change away from becoming significantly more progressive in your ways. All right. But here's the thing. Um, you, can, you can make a change today. But if this change doesn't remain changed, then you aren't going to change. All right. Change must remain changed in order for change to remain. All right. Consistency is key. All right. It's one thing, um, it's one thing to go on a new diet. And I've got a guy that I've worked with um, for years. I don't work with him so much now. But honestly, every three months, he was going on a new diet. And uh, he was on the keto diet and then some other James someone diet and about 50 different diets. And I would ask him simple questions such as, would you like to go for a steak and chips? No, 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 I can't do that. I'm on a diet. I'm on a new diet. And uh, well, listen, rather than going on these kind of crazy diets every three months, why not just learn or discipline yourself to eat in a balanced way? Like, you know, cut out the bacon rolls and have bran for breakfast, you know, have a main meal in the middle of the day and perhaps, you know, something healthy at night time, like a salad or some chicken strips or something like that. But no, he was a fully in, fully out kind of guy and discipline wasn't on his agenda. Just, you know, miraculous results were. So he was inconsistent in his ways and his weight fluctuated up and down like a yo-yo, hence the reason he would bounce from one diet to another, to another, to another. And do you know what he would say? <laughs> That diet doesn't work. <laughs> There's no such thing as a productive or an effective diet, by the way. There's only disciplined or undisciplined people. So if you find yourself as a bit of a fatty, fatty boom, boom, all right, now you can, you can blame your circumstances, you can blame the food that you eat, or you can blame the person who's putting all this food in your mouth, which is the, my friend. All right, just saying. Consistency is a quality of behavior which doesn't vary greatly over time. Character. Includes maturity, includes responsibility, integrity, and perseverance, which all enable progress. Outcomes speak louder than inspirational words and promises. So I'm not, I'm not telling you anything new here. We're just kind of summarizing everything that we've covered so far on the course, because now I want to explore your leadership style. Da, 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 da. <laughs> right, what is your Star Wars leadership style? Right, I'm a bit of a Star Wars fiend. I love Star Wars, always have done. I was kind of brought up in this, where some children are brought up in mother's breast milk. I wasn't, I was brought up in Star Wars. All right, what I understand, having studied and observed all of these key characters of... I've identified a few trends, all right? Got quite a bit of experience in leadership, you know, quite a bit of experience in, uh, in the military, uh, quite a bit of experience in business management and business development, and quite a bit of experience in sales and sales management, and then quite a bit of experience in coaching, which is just leadership throughout. Um, and these are five common leadership styles. I didn't want to go conventional on you, I want to go a bit more insightful. Are you a Darth Vader? Because Darth Vader is pretty effective in some areas, not so effective in others. And here's the thing. We all have the ability to be all five of these leadership styles all of the time or at various times throughout our life. 
Some leadership styles will serve us in certain circumstances and others won't. All right? The key is understanding the difference between the five so we can fluctuate in and out so that we conduct ourselves in the most efficient or effective way circumstantially. Make sense? Darth Vader. What are, what are his Darth Vader's strengths? He sets a clear vision and he's highly goal oriented. He wants to rule the universe, right? He's gone and built himself a Death Star so he can blow up an entire planet. So he's very, very clear of what he wants to achieve. So he's very mission oriented. Weaknesses. Unfortunately, old Darth uses fear tactics, a little bit of manipulation, and draws energy from the dark side. All right, so come on. Pluses, minuses, pros, cons, strengths and weaknesses, all right? Highly missional, but perhaps not the most relational approach. So it might be highly effective in terms of kind of what his objectives are. He might be highly productive, um, but he's not winning himself too many friends and allies along the way because he's killing them all. All right, so then we've got Jabba the Hutt. You know Jabba? I think Jabba wasn't in Star Wars. I think he was in uh, the second Star Wars movie. Um, Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back, all you Star Wars fanatics are going to be screaming at me right now saying, Kane, you should know this. I'm terribly sorry, it slipped my mind. So Jabba the Hutt, well, he's got strengths and weaknesses also. Very different style from Darth Vader, you'll be able to identify. He delegates well under pressure, all right? Because he's that fatty, fatty boom, boom, right? Can't move so well. Um, yeah, strong leadership. But he hasn't prioritised his health. He hasn't taken my advice. He's not been eating much bran for breakfast. I think he got stuck outside the burger van for a couple of years. All right, perhaps likes a little bit of McDonald's or eating small children or something like that. So strengths, yeah, he delegates well under pressure. Now this is a phenomenal leadership trait. I, I have learned to delegate well under pressure. I understand that pressure, or pressure is stress and stress equals time plus limited space, which means that if I find myself under pressure, I either need to create more space for myself or delegate some work out, all right? Which creates an opportunity to include someone else. A project shared is a project halved, all that sort of thing. So Jabba the Hutt delegates pretty much everything because he can barely move very, very practically, which is his strengths, weaknesses. He's not receptive to input, or views that he doesn't like or agree with. <laughs> Sound like anyone you know? Come on, there's a lot of opinionated people out there, aren't there, all right, who will not agree with anything that does not fit inside of their own personal narrative. Um, a rife attribute of the millennial generation, just saying. All right, um, so let us move on to Master Yoda. Now, you good old wise Master Yoda, right? He's got some strengths, doesn't it? He coaches people, he encourages personal growth and development. Ah, Master Luke, why are thou? Um, there is no try, there is only do and do not do. There's Master Yoda in a Scottish accent. So, strengths. Um, he doesn't just delegate, right? He encourages and inspires the best in people. He understands that as he's aged, right, he's not quite as agile as what he used to be in his youth. Um, so as he coaches and mentors other people, he equips and develops a workforce, all right, who will fight the dark side for him, all right, which means he doesn't have to. He just encourages the fighters. Back in his youth, he was a fighter, but now not so, all right. Weaknesses. He's got a bit of an indirect communication style, all right? Could be a little bit hard to interpret sometimes, not always crystal clear, all right? Um, and he has very poor use of grammar, right? If you don't trust me in this, watch the movies. You'll see, you'll see this for yourself. Um, again, leadership. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Sometimes we've just got to tell people straight, all right? Don't be too metaphorical in your leadership um, because if you uh, are overly metaphorical and someone picks up the wrong end of the stick, they're going to end up delivering something that you, perhaps you weren't expecting or wanting or requiring, which just then deems you unproductive or less effective than what you could have otherwise been if you just told someone straight. All right, just saying. Um, but listen, there's a time and there's a space, right? A little bit of Master Yoda is in me, right? The force is with me, I can feel it. I tell stories, I'm a little bit metaphorical sometimes, but sometimes I'm gonna be a bit more like Darth Vader. 
I've got a clear vision. I am sometimes highly missional. Sometimes this is going to come at the cost of the relational connection that I have with some people. Sometimes, um, based upon the importance of a task, right, people are absolutely irrelevant to me. Right? It's not because I'm compassionless. It's not because I don't care. It's just because I'm clear on what my priorities are. Right? There's two forms of leadership. You've got missional leadership and you've got relational leadership. Um, it's very, very difficult to be both at exactly the same time. Very, very hard to be missional and be relational. Very, very hard to be relational whilst also being missional. Hence the reason I have suggested multiple times throughout the training course that it's good to collaborate with people. Right? I've got a project manager that I work with. I've had a few over the years. The guy I'm, work I'm currently working with, Graham, if you're watching, this is you. Graham, perhaps not the most relational of people. Now he is, he's a lovely guy, right? Very direct, very missional, right? Which allows me to be more relational, which is great. So when we're working together, kind of working with different organizations, I'll be good cop, he'll be bad cop, because he focuses on the mission, I focus on the relationships. Very, very difficult to do both, right? Useful to understand this in leadership. Um, also useful to understand this in life in general, kind of like uh, raising a family, I can only imagine. Very, very hard to remain missional and relational at the same time. <laughs> very, very difficult to um, get your kids out, this, out the door to school, I can only imagine, um, if you're listening to them tell stories and trying to appease them and making sure that they're, that they're having a nice time right now, because school doesn't always involve having a nice time. So, um, then we have Princess Leia, right? Princess Leia, what are her strengths? She's mission driven and she leads by example, driven by passion, right? Driven by justice, driven by righteousness, driven by doing good, by serving the greater cause, right? A bit more philanthropic by nature, you could say. Uh, weaknesses. She's got a bit of a low life balance, I found. Sometimes sacrifices herself for the mission. Um, not particularly wise. If you want to be productive, uh, you sometimes have got to just build a little bit of self-preservation around what you're doing. Um, and she sometimes gives little positive feedback, right? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not being judgmental here. I'm just saying that Princess Leia is a bit of a complainer, a bit of a nagger. She sometimes focuses more on what's not going so well than what is going well, just saying. All right, and then we've got C-3PO. Right, C-3PO, he's a, he's a great leader, right? It's interesting style, highly relational, very factual, very informative, right? A little bit humorous sometimes. You kind of know where you stand with C-3PO, very transparent, all right? He gives a lot of feedback. You know exactly where you're at with him pretty much all the time. However, he does have a few weaknesses as well. Poor self-regulation, and he also complains a lot, doesn't he? Right, okay, so... What I'm definitely not doing here, and this is the reason why I've used Star Wars, Star Wars characters, to keep this relatively light and humorous. But, um, but to give you some options now, because what a lot of people do is they'll read leadership books and self-efficiency books and all that sort of thing, and they'll, they'll take some sort of personality profile, and they'll say, oh, that's the personality profile that I am. That's my leadership style, and there, that, therefore that's how I must be. What I'm encouraging to be here is a little bit of Darth Vader, a little bit of Jabba the Hutt, a little bit of Master Yoda, a little bit of Princess Leia, and a little bit of C-3PO all at the same time, when appropriate in context. Makes sense? I'm encouraging you to remain flexible in your approach. You want to be productive or you want to be progressive. If you want to be progressive, then you're talking about living a relatively missional life. You're talking about moving away from where you're at and towards somewhere else that you deem as being greater. Perhaps a greener grass on the other side of the fence. Perhaps a certain outcome or a deliverable or an objective or a mission or a vision or a goal or whatever. All right. You're always going to be dealing with people. You're always going to be presented with obstacles and challenges and hurdles and all that sort of thing. What I'm saying is that in order to not just be productive, but to be efficient, be effective, um, you're sometimes going to be consistent in your pursuit, 
but flexible in your approach. Make sense? Have I articulated that well? Consistent in your pursuit, relentless in your pursuit, but flexible in your approach. All right, if I can give you another one last final example to hopefully help you understand what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say here is when I was first starting out in business years ago, there was a lady that I knew and she was, she was like a, a pastor of a church or something like that, or she was a church leader somewhere in Scotland. And I can't even remember where I met this lady. And uh, when we're talking about kind of business, we're talking about organizational structure. I think it was at some sort of leadership event. And she was there looking at some sort of organizational structure for her new religious organization. And we had this, this, um, this conversation and I was, we were talking about leadership styles. And um, years earlier, I had identified with a leadership presentation that I kind of attended um, about the battering ram approach. And I think this might have been back in the military. You know, some people were so headstrong, and I can certainly identify with this, that when challenges, hurdles, obstacles come their way, they're kind of like a bull in a china shop, head down, boom, just ram, run at the problem, and just brute force trying to get out of the way. Is that the most productive, the most effective way of handling obstacles and challenges and problems? Well, as things transpired, apparently not. Um, so I was bragging about my approach, and in fairness, this approach had enabled me to be relatively productive throughout my lifetime up until that point, but she challenged me. She said, it's interesting, Kane. Um, the battering ram approach, I've never heard of that before. Um, I wonder if that's the most efficient approach, because I understand that yes, bulls can run against brick walls and fences and possibly knock them down, but I guess moles can burrow under walls and, you know, rather than kind of try and knock them down, they can actually leave the walls intact and still get to the other side without bashing their heads and doing themselves any unnecessary damage to the process. And I thought, oh, <laughs> I see where this is going. And just said, and you know what else? Hairs. Hairs run really fast. You know the story of the tortoise and the hare? Um, both started the race at the same time and the hare went sprinting off and the tortoise or whatever was just kind of slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race. And the, 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 uh, the hare was so arrogant, he was so confident he was going to win, he just stopped for a little snooze just a few metres away from the finish line. And then the turtle just crossed the finishing line as the hare woke up and realised he'd lost the race. Anyway, I don't know why I tell you that story. Slow and steady wins the race. I'm sure there's a principle there for personal efficiency. But anyway, hares can run around walls, all right, without having to tear them down. And then, right, then you got animals such as monkeys and sloths and things like that and spiders who will climb over walls. And the principle was, as this good lady highlighted, was that there's many ways of getting over a wall. Yes, you can batter through it, that might be one approach, but you can also dig under it, you can climb over it, or you can just walk around it. I guess all of that's gonna be determined by how patient you are. Hmm, and that might kind of also influence your personal leadership style. Whether you're leading in an organization, in a group, in a corporation, in your family home, or whether you're just leading yourself. Universal principles apply. So all of these factors I've shared here will influence your overall productivity in some way. I'm not here to tell you how. I'm hoping you've identified. And if you need to make some adjustments in some way, I'm hoping I've given you a little bit of context to do so. <laughs>